Dr. Neha Darula with Stanford Healthcare joins us now to talk about new CDC guidelines for COVID-19. So first, let's talk about isolation and quarantine. Can you explain the difference? The term isolation is reserved for a person that has been infected with the virus. So they're officially diagnosed, they've tested positive, and it basically is used to separate an infected individual with others that are not infected. And it's meant for both symptomatic and asymptomatic. So we do know that you know COVID-19 comes with a wide variety of symptoms and sometimes no symptoms. So if you've been infected, you will be asked to isolate. Um, whereas quarantine, on the other hand, is reserved for patients that um, may have been exposed to the virus or have been exposed to the virus. And it's used to separate basically them um, from other individuals that have not been yet exposed. And uh, they, do no, they are not necessarily diagnosed with COVID yet. Um, so they're monitored. And so they're asked to separate themselves from others. And um, it's a very subtle but important difference. And it basically, um, it depends on the um, replication period or the incubation period and the viral shedding period of this virus. And in this case, COVID-19, we know that the um, incubation period is up to 14 days. So what should you do if you've had close contact with someone with COVID-19 but will no longer have close contact with that person? Um, anyone that has had close contact with an infected individual, knowingly or unknowingly, needs to self-quarantine for two weeks. So that's the incubation period that we were discussing. Um, basically, you add 14 days from the last day that you were in contact with this infected individual and let your PCP know. A monitor for symptoms, um, specifically fever, cough, shortness of breath, and they may or may not want you to get tested, um, but keep in close contact with them. And when we do say close contact, that basically means anyone that has been around a COVID-19 patient um, for longer than 15 minutes within six feet of distance, if they've had any physical um, and direct contact, such as touching, kissing, hugging, um, or if they've been taking care of a COVID-19 patient, um, if they've shared any sort of food or utensils, or if they've been exposed with, um, to respiratory droplets from them in any way. What if you have contact with someone who gets sick during your quarantine? Um, the short answer is that you restart. Um, you restart for another two weeks. Anytime you've had close contact with a COVID-19 patient, be it a friend on the outside or a household member or partner, you need to do a full 14 days, even if you've already been quarantined from someone, some other exposure. What should you do if you live with someone with COVID and then they are able to isolate? If strict isolation is possible and there is no close contact with this individual, um, then it's the same. Um, you do your 14 day quarantine from when the person you live with started their home isolation. So what if you live with someone with COVID and you cannot avoid close contact? Um, and this is bound to happen, especially if you're in close quarters or you're caring for the sick individual. Um, lots of parents actually fall into this category as well. Um, and we understand that um, strict isolation may not be possible specifically within your home. Um, in that scenario, the CDC actually recommends avoiding contact with others outside of the home while this individual is sick, as well as additionally for 14 days after that infected individual has met the criteria to end their own home isolation. So when is it safe to be around others after testing positive for coronavirus? Um, this is so important. So this actually depends on the presence of symptoms. So per the CDC guidelines, um, if you tested positive for coronavirus and you've had no symptoms, you can actually end your isolation at the 10 day mark from when you tested positive. However, if you had symptoms and you tested positive for COVID, um, there has to be that 10 day period um, from your initial testing. Plus, it's a little bit stricter. Plus, you have to be fever free for three consecutive days and you have to have some sort of improvement in your respiratory symptoms. So it's a bit stricter um, and it could be longer. And this includes anyone, let's say, you know, you tested positive and you felt kind of crummy for three to four days and you feel better. 
you still have to wait out that 10 days before you can go out and you have to be fever free and your symptoms have to be getting better. Um, plus, depending on how severe your disease was, your underlying medical conditions, and the location that you're in, your provider's preference as well, you may be asked to do a confirmatory negative test. Um, this depends from case to case and is not mandatory, but I would definitely recommend checking in with your PCP. And you still strongly recommend everyone wear masks, but you have to wear them properly, right? Oh my goodness, absolutely. Um, you know, I get it. It's been a really long four months. People are tired and I get that masks are uncomfortable, um, but they are safe. Um, and as we've seen these past few weeks, um, coronavirus is still here, COVID-19 is still here, and it's not going anywhere soon. So we need to continue to take all the precautions. Um, masks, cloth, cloth face masks, sorry, cloth face coverings are one of the easiest ways to help slow, slow down the spread of this disease. But it only slows it down if you're wearing it correctly. So you want to make sure that both your nose and your mouth are covered, that the mask fits snugly on both sides of your face and under your chin. Um, you know, unfortunately, when you walk around, you see quite a few people with their nose sticking out or their mask um, just covers their nose and their mouth is peeping out at the bottom. Um, those are unfortunately not effective. So you're not doing um, yourself any favors or anyone else around you any favors. You know, wash your hands before you put on your mask, put it on correctly, cover both your nose and your mouth, and you know, help protect yourself, help protect your family, your friends, and your community. We all need to work together at this time. Dr. Neha Narula with Stanford Healthcare, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much.